Who told you this? What's important is that it was said. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 betrayals on The Sopranos. Anyway, $4 a pound. For this list, we'll be looking at the most shocking moments of treachery and double dealing on HBO's crime drama series. Because we'll be discussing major plot points, a spoiler warning is in effect. What would you have done in these situations? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, forget about it. Number 10. Jackie Jr. betrays the family. Sure you want to do this? Why? Oh, you? Tony had high hopes for Jackie Jr. He was keeping away from the family business, doing well in school, and happily dating Meadow. However, the influence of Ralph Cifaretto and the allure of organized crime was just too much. It wasn't long before Jackie was harboring dangerous ambitions. When we go in, you do the talk. Me? I know Eugene. I recognize my voice. He ends up turning against the family and robbing a poker game hosted by Eugene Pontecorvo. Empty your pockets. All of you. Come on! Very bad, boys. Very bad. This is a low-level game, guys. In the messy process, he shoots Furio in the leg and kills the dealer, Sunshine. It's a horrible idea that cost Jackie his life. You guys know who you're robbing? Tony refuses to intervene, and Ralph has Jackie whacked by Vito Spatafora. Number 9. Jimmy Betrays Johnny Poor Johnny Sack just couldn't catch a break. I gotta nip this little Carmine shit in the butt. If it wasn't wars with Tony and little Carmine, it was a betrayal by Jimmy Petriel. Petriel served as Johnny's consigliere, but he was also working with the FBI. Philly, why don't you go have a drink? Don't tell me what to do, Jimmy. This is a common theme throughout The Sopranos, as several characters either turn to the FBI or are revealed to be working for them the entire time. Jimmy Petriel is one of the latter. FBI, open up! Petriel feeds the feds enough information to arrest Johnny, and he's put into prison for the remainder of the series. Jimmy Petriel? He's a sweet old guy. He gave them gambling, homicides, trafficking. It's unclear what happened to Petriel, but it's likely that he entered witness protection and lived out his remaining life as the next Henry Hill. Number 8. Junior Tries to Kill Tony Junior Soprano serves as the primary antagonist of the first season and what an antagonist he turns out to be. Who do you think you are? I'm the person who says how things go. That's who I think I am. Through him, viewers are given a fantastic introduction to the hostile atmosphere of The Sopranos, as Junior tries killing his own nephew. Tony and Junior had been at odds throughout the season, as both had different ideas about how to run the business. You may run North Jersey, but you don't run your Uncle Junior. However, the last straw came when Junior learned that Tony had been running things behind his back. If this is true, Livia, you know what I... I mean, I'm the boss, for Christ's sake. This prompted Junior to betray his nephew, sending hitmen to have him whacked. However, the hit failed, and Tony retaliated by killing Mikey and Chucky, which in turn crippled Junior's power within the family. Number 7. Tony has Artie's restaurant blown up. Of all the sad sacks on The Sopranos, Artie might just be the saddest of them all. Despite desperately wanting to come across as a tough guy, Artie is constantly under Tony's control. It's bad enough that these mobsters still come in and patronize the place, okay? But so what? We're not connected. Of course, he gets some nice things out of it, including his fancy Italian restaurant, Nuovo Vesuvio. But he only gets that because his first restaurant blew up, and it was all Tony's fault. Now listen, Artie's dinner business is nice, upscale people from the suburbs. Don't ruin his life. Junior wanted to kill Little Pussy inside Artie's restaurant, but Tony believed this would ruin his friend's professional reputation. Instead, he has Silvo bomb the restaurant so that Artie will remain innocent and claim a hefty insurance payout. You work so hard. You work so damn hard. And to see your life's dream burn down. Of course, Artie nearly kills him when he finds out the truth. When you blew up the restaurant, you made me party to a criminal conspiracy. Did you ever stop to think about that? Number six, Sal becomes an informant. All right, I got a call about a boat, Sea Ray 50. I want you guys' opinion on it. What now? Before the series begins, Salvatore Bonpincero is caught trafficking drugs and begins working with the FBI. 
In order to alleviate his potential 30-year prison term, Sal feeds the FBI information about Tony Soprano and the DeMeo crime family. Price, will you give me a window over here? Tony already thinks maybe I flipped. I gotta be careful. Sal works closely with handler Skip Lapari, and while reluctant at first, he eventually develops an interest in crime enforcement. Unfortunately, his tenure at the FBI crumbles when Tony discovers the truth. You know I've been working with the government, right, Tony? Don't say. He, Pauly, and Silvio then wax Sal, and his body is dumped into the depths of the Atlantic. Is that okay, Tony? Did I sit? Number 5. Tony Kills His Cousin Loyalty is a very tricky concept when it comes to Tony Blundetto. Tony B tries going straight, but eventually returns to the hold. I think I could be of a lot more service to you in other areas. And getting straight now wouldn't hurt neither. Just eat what's on your plate right now. It's not long, however, before Blundetto is going behind Tony Soprano's back, siding with Little Carmine and killing Joey Peeps. Tony, right? Why, well, you come here too? An associate of Blundetto is killed in retaliation, prompting Blundetto to kill Billy Leotardo. To prevent all-out war with the Lupertazzi crime family, Tony personally disposes of his own cousin. So we're going to deal with this as a family, together, no matter how it affects anybody. It was a tragic and completely preventable death, and it's made all the worse coming from a close family member. Number 4. Paulie Goes to Johnny Despite being one of Tony's closest associates, Pauly Galtieri is also one of the most fickle. What's the matter? Yeah, nothing. Well, you could tell Uncle John. Pauly becomes increasingly displeased with life inside the DeMeo family and begins harboring thoughts of flipping to the Lupertazzi's. He goes straight to Johnny Sack and offers his loyalties. I can't tell you how touched I was when my nephew told me you wanted me to call. Anthony only talks to me through middlemen. To help sweeten the deal, he even tells Johnny about a joke that Ralph Cifaretto made about Johnny's wife, nearly getting Ralphie killed. You didn't hear the joke about Ginny? Yes. Never mind. Let it die at that. What joke? Basically, Paulie almost started a war between the DeMeos and the Lupertazzi's. Come on, you told John about that joke, right? However, Johnny was never serious about taking on Paulie. And he goes back to the DeMeos with his tail between his legs and is nearly killed by Tony for his betrayal. Think fast. Jesus, don't. Number 3. Livia Betrays Her Own Son Of all the monsters on The Sopranos, Livia Soprano is the worst. I don't like that kind of talk. One of the most deplorable characters in all of television, Livia doesn't have a shred of love for her children, and she even tries to have one of them killed. You know, they barely have a father now. You should see the way he comes down to the dinner table. Tony puts Livia in a nursing home, sorry, a retirement community, and Livia is so incensed that she tries manipulating Junior into killing him. If this is true, Livia, you know what I... I mean, I'm the boss, for Christ's sake. If I don't act, blood or no... I have to. When all that fails, she tells Artie Bucco about Tony burning down his restaurant in the desperate hope that Artie will try to kill Tony for her. What did he do now? You, you don't blame him for setting the fire? All of Tony's near-death experiences in the first season come back to Livia, who certainly isn't winning any Mother of the Year awards. I know what you did. Sir, please. Your only son, your middle child. Number two, Tony kills Christopher. The most tragic storyline in the show arguably belongs to Christopher Moltisanti. Didn't Paulie tell you I ain't been feeling good? You know what? I wet my ass with your feelings. Thanks. Thanks a lot. He tries his best and desperately wants to be respected by Tony, but his poor results constantly undermine his efforts. You draw down on the boss of a family? Huh? You lied to me! In the end, the repeated mess-ups prove too much for Tony, and he strangles Christopher to death following a car accident. <laughs> While Tony's decision was spontaneous, it was really a long time coming. Tony and Christopher had been at odds for years, and it ended in the ultimate betrayal. I'll never pass a drug test. What? You gotta get me on. Family or not, unending loyalty or not, Tony decided that Christopher had to go, and it was devastating. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Christopher Has Adriana Killed The biggest betrayal in the show undoubtedly belongs to Christopher. We could never come back here, Adrian. I don't want to come back. I just want you. His fiancée, Adriana Laserva, loves Christopher to death and puts up with his constant mistreatment. Don't talk to me. Shut your mouth. She's eventually roped in by the FBI, but gives them little to work with out of loyalty to her betrothed. You were looking down the barrel at 25 years. But I didn't do nothing. However, the stress eventually proves too great, and she reveals the truth to Christopher. They said all they wanted was some information, and they would leave us alone. I didn't tell them nothing. I swear to God, I just license plate some other stupid shit. While he seems to genuinely consider running away with her, he ends up choosing the family over his family and has Adriana killed. Come on. No, no, Come please. On. While it buys him points with Tony, the choice ultimately ruins his life and he falls back into self-hatred, sloppy work, and drug abuse. This, in turn, results in his own death at Tony's hands. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.